Hello and welcome. We're here at AFA's Airspace and Cyber Conference with Northrop Grumman's Tom Jones, Corporate Vice President and President of Aeronautic Systems. Thanks, Tom, for taking some time to chat with us today to talk about B-21 and other topics. Absolutely. Uh, very happy to be here with you. Our first question, which is there was a full panel this week on mm -hmm. the B-21 program. So what would you say are the things that really made the program a success over the last couple of years? Yeah, so, you know, there, there was a number of things that really um, have helped burn down the risk on this program and, and got a lot of the, the uh, positive feedback we've mm -hmm. gotten from the Air Force, Congress, OSD, et cetera. I, I think, you know, really, if you look at it, and I, I like to look at this in terms of what are lessons we can take and carry forward into other acquisitions as well, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, you know, one thing I think, this is a program where we really tried to adapt digital technology, mm -hmm. digital engineering. So, so what does that mean? We've been doing digital models for years, right? right? Uh, when I was a beginning engineer 30 years ago, yes. I had CAD programs, right? <laughs> the difference was you couldn't connect, you couldn't interconnect uh, those tools so that one CAD model could feed another, right. could feed another, right? You didn't have the compute power, the software wasn't that advanced. We've now got to that stage. And what we've been trying to do is to, as we design and develop the B-21, develop digital models with very high fidelity mm -hmm. so that we can shorten the time to test because we're more accurate. We're also able to take this singular model of truth, if you will, of what the B-21 is and transfer it all the way down to operating instructions mm -hmm. on the shop floor sure. so that people on the shop floor can see the drawings right there. Yeah. A lot of benefits there. We've seen things such as we've been able to validate the structural models we used on B-21 to be twice as accurate as the typical results mm. that we get in industry prior to that. So we know that we've got very good models, drastically reduced the time that we need to do that. Right. So I think digital is, is a really key area. And maybe later on, I think we might talk about manufacturing a little bit. We are. And we'll talk about how, how does the digital um, model digital engineering interface with manufacturing and make that more effective another thing i'd say was really key in the success of the program is what we're doing is we say we make t1 like p1 okay so t1 is first test aircraft mm -hmm. p1 is first production aircraft mm -hmm. typically in a lot of aviation programs your first test article is what they call a flight sciences right it's stripped down no mission systems very rudimentary it's basically to get out there prove the aircraft flies as designed and you can expand the envelope if you do that and a lot of times it's made by a small group of highly experienced people maybe right. sometimes even engineers right you then have to turn around later on and figure out how you're going to produce that system mm -hmm. you have to design the tooling you have to figure out how to get shop floor instructions regular technicians can understand if you make T1 like P1, you're actually able to, at the same time you make that aircraft, flush out your manufacturing processes, your tools, your quality assurance, figure out your process drivers, mm -hmm. all as you move forward. You also end up with a test aircraft that's more representative sure. of the actual aircraft. Mm -hmm. So you can use it for more things than just exploring the flight envelope. So you have more assets and tests. So a lot of benefits to this. It takes a little bit longer to get it right, mm -hmm. but I think the payoff of parallelizing all those learning processes more than pays off for it. It enables us to go into production smoother and to get more product on ramp at a quicker rate and sooner, which is mm -hmm. what our customer wants. Final thing I'd throw in there is we've really tried to integrate sustainability mm -hmm. into our design right from the beginning. In the design aspects, we've also pulled in maintainers. They're helping us in our, our test cost centers right. work on the aircraft. We've pulled in software maintainers to help us work on the code in our software factory. Mm -hmm. So those, I think, were kind of the three big you know, program design. Of course, we've got a great customer, the RCO, kept the requirements stable, kept the funding stable, mm -hmm. and that has also been a key ingredient to success. Good stuff. Um, Great, some great, great insights there, Tom. So you mentioned earlier in your response about uh, best practices, lessons learned. Which of those might apply to other programs? So the B twenty one is a very specific program; it has its own lessons learned. But which of those translate to other programs? 
I think, I think almost all the things I mentioned do, right? I, I believe so. The, the challenge, you know, we have going forward is going to be how do we rapidly develop technology? How do we rapidly build and test it mm -hmm. and get that on ramp for our customer? Because the threat they're facing is, you know, this economic juggernaut that's just cranking war material mm -hmm. out at rate. So that's a challenge we as industry have. So the streamlining of designs, the ability to get improved efficiency in test and manufacturing that you get from digital engineering, I mm -hmm. think is, you know, that's a key enabler to how we're going to go forward and do that. I think the advanced manufacturing uh, techniques also are going to play a big part and I'm going to hold advanced manufacturing until later because that's like a, like a whole topic right. in and of itself. Good stuff there, Tom. Really appreciate your insights. And thank you for watching. Bye.